So friends, welcome back to our channel Learn with Gigs. In this video, I will discuss with you two very important Power BI interview questions which were asked at Volkswagen, which is a product based company you all know. These two questions were provided to me by one of my LinkedIn connections, which I will show you in few seconds. So let's discuss those two questions with their solutions before starting. Please do like this video. It really motivates me. Subscribe to the channel if you are new to it and you can also follow me on Instagram learn with gigs. All right. So you can see on the screen here are those two questions. You can see here clearly it is mentioned it was asked in Volkswagen. So now let's discuss the question number one as well as question number two. So the first question is how would you optimize the performance of a large power BI report with multiple data sources and complex DAX calculations. Second question is explain the concept of bi-directional cross filtering in power BI. When would you use it and what are its potential drawbacks? So this question number two, we will discuss first and then we'll proceed with the question number one. So question number two is very, very important real time use case. So to explain question number two, I have created a dummy data set with three tables. You can see on the screen, which is country table, sales fact table and state table. Let me show you the data that I have used. Country is a dimension table with two columns, country and the respective country code. State is again a dimension table with state and their respective state code and sales fact table is a fact table containing the transaction IDs with the unit sold and correspondingly total sales. Now, if I take you to the model view, this is how the model looks like. So this is a star schema and you can see these two tables are connected to each other through country code and with one to many relationship. Similarly, this state and sales fact table is connected with state code column with one to many relationship because that's how our data is. Now, if I take you to the report view and explain you through this example. So I have a table. Okay. So this table contains all the columns from the respective three tables. This is a slicer of country column and this is a slicer of state column. Now, if I suppose select India from country column from this slicer, obviously this particular table will filter out and it will show two entries are there from India. So it is showing two records. Now you suppose see state, this state column, which is also a slicer over here, it didn't get filtered out, right? And if I select over here, Gujarat, obviously it will show you right values because it is filtering as per the model. For example, if I select here, Goa, nothing will show over here because there is no transaction for state Goa. But if I uncheck this and if I select California, for example, again, it is blank and we have the transaction for California, which I can show you over here. You see transaction number three and transaction number four are for California and we have their respective total sales and units sold. So on the report view, we are not able to see anything. Why? Because once I have checked the slicer for India, it is not able to filter out this state column. And to understand that we need to go again back to the model view. Now you see here, here is my country column. Now, for example, we selected India. So India got selected from here. And you can see it, it, it filter out this particular sales fact table, but it can't go to this side of fact table where we have this state dimension table. And that's where this model fails. The filter context is restricted till this fact table to overcome this. What we have to do, we have to go here and do right click, go to properties, go to this cross filter direction and make it to both click on save. So now it is bi-directional. So now my filter context can travel from this country dimension table to sales fact table and from here to state dimension table. You know, if I go back to the report view, if I unselect California, you see California is gone. Why? Because as soon as I select India from country column, it is filtering out state column and we can't see any other values except the states which are there from India having the transactions. For example, if I unselect India and if I select USA, it is filtering out this particular table and at the same time it is filtering out this particular slicer as well with California. So if you're developing the report and if you have these two slicers on your report and if you haven't done this bi-directional filtering in that case, as you, as you were seeing earlier, you will find all other values also. It will not filter out other state values as per the selection in country column. There are a lot of people who gets confused on this particular concept. I hope after watching this particular part of this video, your concept is clear and you would be able to answer this particular kind of scenarios in your interviews too easily. Now, this was a sample data with few records. So you can do the bi-directional filtering, but if it is a large model, okay, if it is a large data set model, in that case, it is not advisable to use this bi-directional kind of filtering as it can lower down the performance of your overall model and which will ultimately have effect on report rendering which will be not good from the end user's point of view. And there can be another counter question. What is the alternate way to handle this bi direction filtering? And to answer this, you need to speak that we can make use of cross filter DAX function to create a measure as per our requirement. Obviously, it is not useful in this scenario, but in other scenarios, 
क्रॉस फिल्टर डैक्स फंक्शन कैन बी यूजफुल ना मूविंग ऑन टू द क्वेश्चन नंबर फर्स्ट हाउ वुड यू ऑप्टिमाइज द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ अ लार्ज पावर बेड रिपोर्ट विद मल्टीपल डेटा सोर्सेज एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स डैक्स कैलकुलेशन वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्ट यू शुड नो द ऑप्टिमाइजेशन टेक्निक्स दैट यू कैन डू और दैट यू कैन एक्सप्लेन इन फ्रंट ऑफ द इंटरव्यू और लेट मी शो केस व्यू ऑफ दैम विच यू कैन मैंशन इन द इंटरव्यू सो द फर्स्ट वन इज कीप ओनली दो कॉलम्स योर यूजर्स नीड इन द रिपोर्ट सो दैट मीन्स रिमूव ऑल द अनवॉन्टेड कॉलम्स सेकेंड वन इज Similar to columns, keep only those rows you need. Maybe you don't need to import data for the last ten years, but only five years data you require to be refreshed on a daily basis. So why to load all ten years of data and ultimately creating problem for the performance? And this is where the concept of incremental load comes into picture. So if you will mention these kind of points, it is very convincing. It creates a very good impression in front of the interviewer. So what you can mention next? Aggregate your data whenever possible, wherever possible. Means if you aggregate your data, there will be fewer rows. Fewer rows result into reduced size. Reduced size means lower cardinality, and as soon as the cardinality becomes lower, the overall performance becomes better. So you have to understand how aggregation can help you overall in the performance. Next is to make use of proper data types. For example, if you have a column of date date type, then don't make it to date time column because by default sometimes Power Query what it does, it automatically assigns date time data type to a date column as well. So check the data types properly. Next one is avoid using calculated columns whenever possible. since they are not logically optimally compressed so that means if you have to create any kind of calculated column try to push all the calculations from the data source itself or create them in power query editor since in power bi desktop where calculated column is created the compressibility factor reduces by 90% so if you'll mention this point it again creates a very good impression these points that you can see on the screen this is my knowledge from the 6 years of data analytics journey in power bi so please do like this video if you haven't till now you won't find this kind of things anywhere else on youtube next point is disable auto date time option from options and settings this will remove a bunch of automatically created date tables in background now the next point is very very important optimization tech optimization technique reduce column cardinality what does that mean higher the cardinality of a column the harder the vertipack to optimally compress the data and again what is cardinality cardinality means how unique there are values in that particular column that represents the cardinality of that column for example if you have a column of date time then what you do split that column into two columns one with date and the other one with the time date type so in this way cardinality get reduced and so the size so this is again a very important point to be explained in front of the interviewer if i talk about dax based measures or calculated columns for example then try to make use of variables as much as possible because variables store the result of a measure and you can use that same variable in your entire measure code as much as possible it will not be calculated multiple times it will be only calculated once as we have stored it in a variable again a very important point now the next point is do not use bi directional filtering in your data except for security purpose for security purpose bi directional filtering should be used so this is again a use case of a bi directional filtering which i didn't mention in question number 1 but you can understand from here so if you have to implement row level security and if you have a security table separately in that case you should definitely make use of bi directional filtering so that properly all the credentials of all the users are filtered out so i hope you understood the solution of these two questions thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for the upcoming useful videos